Hello, good morning. It's 1029. That means it's time for some celebrity dish. We've got our friend, Magic 102.3 FM radio personality, Aja Chandler, joining us this morning. Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. You know, last time I saw you, I was saying uh, you were organizing an event, and you got another one coming up. Yes, and you know, I'm all about the community. So mm -hmm. I have another event. We have a Buy Black Business Bazaar. It's on Sunday, December 3rd at the Harborside Hotel. Okay. It's open to the public. It's absolutely free. And then we have my holiday gala, which is my charity event because I always service the homeless and foster kids for the holiday season mm. so I want you to come out and see rough ends and have a good time and party with a purpose rough ends. Yeah. Okay. yeah taking nice. it back with some R&B legends yeah Stay busy. I do right. I, I love, by the way every time you come on I feel like I'm listening to the radio which I guess is appropriate right <laughs> thank you <laughs> the voice the yeah. voice all right let's hop into it here uh, first up switching gears things are not looking so good for music mogul Sean Diddy Combs mm -hmm. following sexual assault allegations mm -hmm. by two additional women now someone in Diddy's own inner circle is coming forward with their own revelations about what they say they saw. Let's bring in our producer, producer Chris, to explain the latest in these uh, explosive allegations. Chris, it seems to just be going from bad to worse. Yeah, you've said it. And this is someone who was very close to Diddy because he was his head of security and his bodyguard. His name is Roger Bond. So in a post made on social media, Bond says he intervened several times as Diddy brutally assaulted multiple women and that he grew sick of having to cover up Diddy's actions. At one point, he even acknowledged that he jumped in to protect Cassie. That's Diddy's former girlfriend who publicly came forward earlier this month with the accusations that Diddy physically beat and raped her over the course of their 10-year relationship. The two later settled out of court for an undisclosed amount despite Diddy denying those allegations. So as for his former head of security, Bond says he's kept quiet for so long out of respect for Diddy's children, but felt that the media mogul did not return the same loyalty and respect, especially when he needed help in paying his son's legal team team as his son faced murder charges. Guys, this may only get messier, too, because in a now-deleted post, Bond used the hashtag Two Faces, the documentary, hinting that some sort of documentary may be in the works oh. about this whole situation. Mm. Uh, I knew it wouldn't take long. Yeah, um, yeah. Once one comes out, they're all going to come mm -hmm. out. Yeah. What do you yeah. make of it? Well, you know, it's really awkward because I, I know Diddy, like working in the industry for about two decades. You mm -hmm. can't help but have interacted with him several different times. So when we see him, we see, you know, the fun, loving, go out, you know. So we can't imagine yeah. that side. But there's a video of Cassie, like, balled up under a blanket mm -hmm. where he's, like, mm -hmm. on social media kind of, like, taunting her, yeah, and that's not looking good for him. So, I don't know. I know. What do you, what do you think? Well, I mean, she, she did kind of talk about this, or at least her lawyers mentioned that there were a loyal network of security guards and folks who work with Diddy um, who had been working to try to stop some of these fights from happening. So mm -hmm. it's good to have a name of the person. Mm -hmm. uh, it does take a lot of guts mm -hmm. for someone to speak up after being so loyal to a company and being paid by um, your boss right. and to go against that word, all to help maybe get justice for uh, a, a Cassie or, or other people involved. So it, it's good that we have a name and someone's willing to step up, but I, I think this will be the ripple effect of multiple people mm -hmm. in the network who will speak up. Yeah, I, I think if you know anything about these cases that we've seen you know, in, in the past few decades, even if this person settles, it still encourages others other people, yeah. right, to come, to come right. forward. So I, I'm, I'm sure even Diddy knew. Uh, there's going to be more coming Some after this. Point. And yeah. the guilt, you know, people, they can't live with that guilt forever. Right. It's Whether true. it's the victims yeah. or the people, yeah. right, like the security guard who may have helped cover this stuff up. Absolutely. All right, guys, let's talk about Beyonce now, because there's a million reasons to love her already, and mm -hmm. I'm adding one more. And it's her ability to say so much without saying anything at all. So remember yesterday we talked about her mom, Tina, coming to her defense against the critics of her new look at the premiere of the Renaissance movie. Well, yesterday, Beyonce <laughs> finally posted for the first time since any of that. No caption whatsoever, but she was rocking that blonde look again. She posted new pictures. She rocked the black sunglasses, a cream-colored suit coat with white sweatpants. The criticism clearly not phasing her at all, and she looks gorgeous. You can see from that close-up. Meanwhile, the Washington Post published its list for do's and don'ts for fans headed to see the Renaissance movie, which opens tomorrow. They include... Take notes. Do come in your chromed out best. Do not rock the 10 gallon hat to block the view mm. of people behind you. Do get <laughs> loose, don't get carried away, and do not disrespect 
the mute challenge, guys. That's heartbreaking for Marissa because she's already talking about wearing that wearing same the hat. hat. Uh, I know. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be heartbreaking for her. What do you think? I think what movie can require a dress code? I'm right. like, wait a minute. I can't wear jeans and a sweatshirt. Yeah, but only it is Beyonce. Beyonce. It is Beyonce. I will say, as far as the mute challenge, they don't have to worry about that with us because we knew how to, we understood the assignment when right. we came here to D.C. Especially oh, really? on the that. second night that I happened to be uh, attending. Right. We understood the assignment and then we got beat out by ATL. <laughs> right. so, uh, so, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not going to go on the first night on its debut, which I think is tomorrow, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do um, hope to see it soon. Are you going tomorrow? I am going to go tomorrow. We'll be ready and right up around. I can wear blonde, blue, red, purple, green. She can wear whatever she wants. And you know what? A bunch of people are going to follow yeah. suit. Yeah. So. yeah. But, but, but to your point, Chris, I mean, she does have this ability to be able to say nothing at all and still be able to stand, stand on her business. And that's become her MO, and yeah. I love it. She yes. doesn't dignify yeah. the nonsense with a response. That's right. All right, guys, let's wrap things up with Kim Kardashian, because if you are ever worried that she's not self-aware, guess again, okay? Because the Skims founder finally admitted that she is just as shocked that she is so successful as the rest of us and the rest of the country. So in a recent episode of The Kardashians, she talked about this. They were reminiscing about their early beginnings. This was the season four finale of The Kardashians earlier this week. She said their success was a total fluke and that they're not supposed to be where they are. They, she went even further. She said the whole family basically scammed the system to become famous. Now, that's not a knock on the hard work and all that they have accomplished since then. But do you guys agree with her assessment a little bit Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. you said absolutely. You said absolutely. <laughs> yes, but I'm just happy that she admitted it. Yeah, it's been a scam since day one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess I guess maybe maybe I'm just out of the vortex, but but where's the scam here? I mean, it was all like a plot, you know, to release the video, to get the attention, and to just take it the next door. I mean, her mom is like a genius. And she knew how to take that and make it what it is. Right. So you don't think so, it's by I, chance? Absolutely not. I think I think that's what separates one from the other because we've seen sex tapes come out before, right, right, and it's right. a total fluke as far as them being able to use that and leverage it into something else. Right. Uh, their business acumen. I mean, Chris Jenner, I think, deserves most of the credit. It yes. has just been remarkable to yes. see it happen. And folks have tried since then. They have tried. And yeah. it has not worked out. At so. All. so. All right. Well, it always works out when you're here with us. Yes, Thank you for does. coming. And yeah. where can folks connect with you for these events? Uh, <gasps> Please follow me at. Always Ask Asia on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Again, that's Always Ask Asia. And remember to tune in on Saturday and Sunday to Magic 102.3 and 92.7 because we are the real sound of the DMV. Mm -hmm. And you just tuned into the radio this morning, <laughs> but we love it. Yeah, did you hear that? <laughs> right? Oh, I love it. I love right, it. Holly, we'll oh. come in over to you. I know. I'm like, let her.